Again, thanks for joining. Uh, I'm looking forward to visiting with you a little bit about enhanced coverage option. Uh, you've probably read a little bit about this new program for 2020. Uh, it sounds like the RMA is uh, working diligently to try to push this through and get uh, get it all up and going for this coming year. So uh, the first thing I would probably say is, uh, I think a big kudos goes out to our leader, uh, Jim Corrin, for uh, being at the forefront of pushing this uh, through and getting it started for this year. Uh, NAU, in conjunction with Watson Associates, were the ones that uh, initiated the process of getting ECO uh, through the RMA, and uh, and it seemed that it was uh, overwhelmingly supported uh, by many other insurance companies as well. And so we're thankful that we have this new tool uh, available here for the 2021 year. If you're familiar with SCO, the first thing I'll say, if you're familiar with the SCO program, which we've had for the last couple of years, then you should be familiar with ECO. Uh, everything is very similar. It's a county-based insurance product uh, or area-based. Uh, this is a little bit original, though, the fact that it allows us to go up to 95%. Uh, the SCO, the supplemental coverage option, stopped at 86%. ECO allows you to add extra bands of coverage from 86 up to 90 or 86 up to 95%. So that's uh, unusual, certainly, and it's something that's, I think, uh, very interesting. Uh, I had somebody asking about audio. Are we okay on audio? Okay, thank you. So that's, to me, the big benefit of this program is the fact that we can get up to 95%. Uh, I'm excited about uh, being able to do that and my background just for those not familiar is in the marketing side of the business and I started as a, as a grain marketing uh, person uh, with a grain company at, before getting into the risk management side about uh, 20 years ago but still my focus uh, continues to be on the uh, on the markets and you know, if you're familiar with the, of course, the formula for revenue is price times yield and price being half of that. Uh, certainly gives us a reason to be focusing a lot on price. And so that's, uh, you, you may have read and, and hear my phone calls in the morning, uh, but my my focus is on the price side. And so that's kind of the angle I'm coming at with this uh, looking at ECO here today. Uh, this is an optional endorsement to the individual coverage. It will match the individual coverage, similar to SCO. So if you had a yield policy, uh, YP on your farm, uh, individual protection, then your ECO will also be yield only. If you had a revenue policy, then the ECO coverage is going to be revenue uh, as well. ECO will be available for 31 crops for the 21 year, and we're told more will be added for the 22 year, so that's pretty exciting if you're in uh, certain areas of the country that have a lot of different uh, crops produced. And then ECO premiums, uh, which we're all waiting to hear, uh, how much is it going to cost? Uh, we don't think we're going to know that till at least the end of November or the 1st of December. And so that's kind of going to be the, the, the big deal, I think, as far as being able to sell it, of course, is knowing what it's going to cost. But uh, this next slide shows the crops. We've got 31 crops available for this year. Uh, these are in alphabetical order, so these you've probably seen the memo from the RMA that has the list of the crops as well. So most of the major crops that we produce, in addition to uh, quite a few other crops that are added for this year as well. Uh, as far as yields go uh, that are insurable, none of that's been released yet. However, if you're familiar with the Margin Protection Insurance Program, which we were able to sell up until the end of September. Uh, the same yields will be available for the margin protection uh, that were available for, or will be for SCO as well as ECO. So all of these county products are gonna use the same yields going forward. And so here was a map that Watts had uh, showing the corn yields for non-irrigated corn. Uh, these were margin protection yields. So they'll be the same for ECO as well as uh, SCO. As we get for, go forward, we'll get the fill in the rest of the counties around that also uh, will have this product available. Uh, here's the map for soybeans, kind of give you an idea, at least through the middle part of the country, that uh, the counties that had uh, margin protection uh, for uh, soybeans. And then here's the non-irrigated wheat uh, in the upper Midwest, so in the uh, northern states for spring wheat. So these all had margin protection insurance available. Uh, so these county yields will be the same uh, for the uh, 
uh, for the ECO. Let me go back one slide. I just wanted to mention uh, just kind of a, uh, my thoughts on this is that, you know, I think ECO, we don't know the rates yet. We don't know the premiums, but my guess is, is that it's going to be more sellable uh, or more palatable in the areas that are the darkest blue on this map. Those are the areas where we probably write the most 85% insurance uh, at the RP level. These are the areas where margin protection was probably cheaper relative to some of the other areas as well. And so my guess is, is that, the, that the ECO will kind of follow suit with that and probably be cheaper uh, in those areas that tend to have the higher yields. We'll find out here in a month or so, but that's just kind of my thought as we go into this. So some of the decisions producers are going to be able to make or have to make, producers must purchase an individual policy in order to purchase ECO. So you can't just buy ECO on its own. You'll have to have at least some underlying coverage. Uh, producers may purchase SCO. So you don't have to, uh, which leads to the question, yes, you can leave a gap in your coverage if you wish. So some producers, and we've already had some discussions about this, some farmers may decide that I'm gonna insure 75% on my farm, and then I'm gonna buy the 86 to 95 uh, window on the ECO. Leave a gap in your coverage, save a few dollars in premium, but get your coverage up to that high level. So that's, a very, that's very possible that that could happen. Uh, and as people start to strategize a little bit, you start to look at the rates in your area, we may come up with that, uh, that solution uh, for a lot of producers. The other thing we did find out here a couple of years ago, and something that kind of I didn't know until we did it, uh, but the administrative fee of $30 on a policy is in place for every policy you have. Even for, so for RP, for SCO and ECO, they would each have their individual ad admin fees. And we bumped into this because with SCO because some producers who had bought 85% RP insurance added one point of SCO protection thinking it was really cheap. It was a good way to bump up to 86%. But at the end of the day, they got charged 30 bucks for that. Uh, they got charged the admin fee for that extra one point. And if you didn't have very many acres in the county, it ended up being uh, you know, kind of counterproductive. So something to keep in mind if we're you know, considering 85 RP and then ECO, you know, there may be some folks just leave off the SCO, leave that 1% gap so you don't have the admin fee. Uh, ECO will not be impacted by PLC and ARC decisions. If you remember with SCO, that was a big deal because if you were gonna buy the SCO, you had to be enrolled in PLC mainly because ARC and SCO were very similar. Both of them had 86% triggers and both of them were county-based products. Uh, now, ECO is above the ARC. It's, it starts at 86, goes up to 95. So it's not overlapping ARC. So the bottom line is a producer can be enrolled in ARC and still buy the ECO protection at the top end. So that's different than what we had with SCO. So kind of keep that in mind. It will not be impacted by the decision. Now, if you listen to some of the stuff I'm talking about, others, I, I think most of us are thinking that PLC is probably going to be the way to go next year for most, if not all, crops. But nonetheless, keep this in mind. If a producer has a reason they want to go with the ARC program, it will not impact this decision. Uh, ECO will be subsidized at a 44% rate. That's good news as well, you know, versus other products that are not subsidized. Uh, uh, when we look at some of the private products uh, that uh, are available out in the out in the marketplace, you know those are you're paying full price for those protections that go up to 95%. Uh, this is 44% paid for by the government, so that's a big big deal that I really really like for ECO as we go forward. It should make ECO very competitive. Uh, with other products as well. Uh, did have a question, is this not available in California? It, yes, it will be available in California. The, the maps I showed earlier were just the only county yields that we knew so far because those had been released for margin protection insurance. Uh, and those were the, uh, Watts had supplied those maps to us. So uh, we should have, and I think that uh, margin is available in California as well, but we'll, we'll, these will be available in all states. Uh, this program will be, and uh, we'll find those out hopefully in a little over a month. 
So I think this subsidy is a very big deal. It was great that we were able to get the RMA to, to jump on board with this product to allow producers to get extra coverage at a subsidized level. So the indemnity details, um, ECO's expected and final yields are going to be the same, uh, or excuse me, are based on RMA data, same as SCO, same as margin protection. So that'll be a good deal. It was a good deal a year or so ago that all the county products went to the same yields. Now ECO will be using the same numbers. Uh, the final yields won't be released until late spring, as are the other uh, county products. So indemnities will not be paid until the early part of summer. That can be a negative uh, for the county products, uh, but it, we can work with producers as we start to see some state yields released and, and try to come up with ideas on what we think potential indemnities could be. Uh, the indemnities are impacted slightly by a producer's APH versus the area yield trigger. And that's because, and if you remember with SCO, same thing, uh, with SCO, producers uh, with higher APHs than the county end up getting a slight bump in payment. Uh, producers with an APH that's less than the county uh, end up with slightly less than the county average payment. So keep that in mind, and I'll show you our worksheet here in a little bit that does take that into account uh, in being able to calculate the potential payments. Uh, Randy asked the question, what is an example of an unsubsidized private product? Uh, I, I don't want to give names, but there are, county, uh, there are companies that have released, uh, that have had different things uh, that allow you to go up to 90, 95% individual coverage uh, in the last two or three years, but those are pretty expensive coverages. And uh, NAU has chosen not to go down that route. Uh, instead, uh, we've gone down this route and tried to promote a coverage that was gonna be uh, subsidized by the government. Uh, last one on here, ECO indemnities and individual indemnities are not connected. So keep that in mind. You could have a producer get paid on a loss in the county, but not have a loss on their own farm. Or you could get paid on a loss on your farm, but the county didn't pay, if the county had good yields. Uh, this kind of brings back to the point that the people that are usually the better uh, people to, to participate in these county programs are producers that tend to track with the county or track a little bit better than the county on average. And so those, I, I'm sure, will be the people that are the most interested in this product. If you tend to follow the county on average, uh, that uh, that this should be a pretty good program. So each agent on this webinar, I believe, uh, likely has at least one producer that should consider this product. I, I think that we've all got people that are qualified for this. And for some of the reasons, 95% uh, coverage is the highest subsidized coverage available. It's a way to really shrink your deductible, get up as close as you can to 100%. It is a county-based product, which can be good, as I just mentioned, for producers with a yield history as good or better than the county. Uh, I put a, an asterisk here because we are working behind the scenes on trying to come up with some uh, ways that we can track that and compare the producer yields to the county. So that'll be great when we can be able to do that and be able to show a producer. You know, some farmers may say, well, I don't know if I necessarily follow the county. Well, we can work thinking that most producers do a little bit, uh, tend to track with the county, and we're hoping to be able to show that. Uh, last one on here, it only takes a 5% loss in revenue to trigger an indemnity payment. So that can be either uh, a drop in price, a drop in bushels, some combination, but only 5% to start to trigger an indemnity payment. And so that, uh, it, you know, again, we're shrinking that deductible as much as possible. Uh, did have one question. Uh, where can I go to see state crops? Which crops will be eligible for ECO? Hopeful to see that list ASAP. Um, if we haven't gotten that out, we'll try to do that. I'm not sure if they've released that by state. I know they've released it by crop, of course, but uh, uh, we'll we'll dig into that, Miranda, and see if we can find that for you. That's a good question. So again, going back to the... Uh, uh, Thing we were just discussing about shrinking the deductible. Here's a couple of examples that, that Watts had. Uh, you know, on the left it shows a 95% ECO. In this example, the producer would have bought a 75% uh, multi-parallel policy. 
He could have then added SCO or ARC, I guess, but SCO coverage from 75 up to 86%. And then we can add the 86 to 95 window with ECO. So you've really, really shrunk that deductible as tight as you can possibly get it. On the right, shows a 90% band. Uh, so again, with 75% uh, multi peril policy, then you add 11 points of SCO, add another four points of ECO. So a lot of it's going to depend on rates, of course, uh, which one's more palatable, and uh, ultimately how high the producer wants to get his coverage. So uh, one last thing I have on here, uh, the question I would ask a lot of producers, uh, no matter where you're at, can you afford at least a 15% loss in revenue? Because that's where revenue protection insurance at its highest level would begin to trigger. And so if you're in areas that you don't write 85%, is 80%, is 70%, can you live with that? Now, granted, it's better than the alternative of nothing at all, but, uh, but this, again, is one way that we can get some extra coverage up to some higher levels. So what are we thinking for 2021? Well, this is kind of where I come into play and my thoughts on the, on the markets. But as of, you know, as we start thinking about ECO for next year, none of us can predict what yields are going to do. Uh, we kind of go into these, uh, you know, into the year thinking, well, if we have an average crop, what's going to happen with price? And so I'm really kind of looking at this on the price side of things. And so these are some of the things that I, you know, am thinking as we head into 2021, at least regarding prices. Uh, we have big world stocks available for most crops right now. But we're also seeing a big growth in demand, which is led by China. And that's what's really stirring the pot as far as these markets go at the present time. Uh, we've got speculative funds that are holding record or near record long positions in the markets right now. So they've really jumped on board as we've seen the China demand pick up. A lot of these speculators have gotten into the, mar into the ag markets. So we'll see if they stick around or if they decide to exit at some point. Uh, we've had some dry weather issues in Europe and in Brazil, as well as in the United States. Certainly the western half of the country has been extremely dry, or two-thirds of the country now. So uh, will that impact the wheat crop, uh, uh, and will it impact us on into spring? Uh, the La Nina is having some impact on Brazil right now, and we've had some dry weather in, in Europe as they've tried to plant the wheat. So all of those things are factors. Uh, an increase in world planted acres is expected this coming year, led by Brazil this fall. Brazil's expected to plant at least 3% more soybean acres uh, here uh, in the next few weeks, um, mainly due to the, the fact that they're clearing some rainforest. Uh, they continue to do that every year. And with prices going up, we would anticipate that being the case. And in the United States, the same way. We've had two years of significant prevented plant. Most of us expect a lot of those acres to come back into production this year. So the bottom line is we expect to see more volatility in prices. Certainly that's been the case right now. I expect that to continue on into 21. So a couple of questions before I flip the slides. Uh, can we obtain the copy of these slides? Yes, we're gonna make that available. Uh, like SCO, would you be required to purchase ECO on both practices or can you choose to buy irrigated and non-irrigated acres of the crop? I believe that's on both practices. Someone in underwriting can help me on that, but I believe it's county-based, so I don't think it, it necessarily determines whether it's non-irrigated corn and irrigated corn. I think you're buying it on the corn in that county, I believe. Uh, Another question, so one big difference, SCO and ECO, ECO stops at 86% and does not come down to meet the coverage. That is correct. It does stop at 86%. It, uh, it says it is based on crop insurance projected prices and county yield. That is correct as well. So yes, ECO does stop at 86. So go back to the original comment that I had made uh, that there was a, but you can leave a gap in coverage. You don't have to buy the SCO underneath. Producers could buy the individual coverage and then add ECO up on top. Um, Julie asks, SCO for California wheat is 1031. Uh, so this is not going to be available. I, or the sales closing date, I think that's correct. I think that's only, as it was not available yet for uh, winter wheat in the other parts of the country as well this year. So yes, it won't be available until spring crops of 21.
So with that, we'll go ahead and flip. And as I mentioned just a second ago about acres, uh, I just want to share this slide. Here's a snapshot of prevented plant acres over the last few years and, and planted acres. And, you know, you can see that even though planted acres uh, around the country of principal crops were up this year, we were still running eight or nine million acres less than we had run the previous four years. So most of us think that we're going to see an increase in planted acres next year that you'll see prevent plant in all likelihoods, we don't know what's going to happen, but you would think that prevented plant would dip back to a more normal year at some point. Consequently, you could have some bigger crops. Consequently, you could have some potential pressure on price. So, which kind of leads me to where I, I want to get to here, looking at, uh, uh, at some price charts and some price history. What tends to happen with these markets? Uh, here's December 21 corn, and unfortunately, we can't lock in the prices right now for next year. You know, these prices will be set in the in the late winter uh, for, the ins for these insurance policies. But you can see if we were to have a, a sales closing today, uh, December of 21 corn closed last night at $4 a bushel. And so when I start looking at what does ECO provide at the high level, if I buy a 95% ECO protection, let's assume again that, that we have average yields in the county next year, but we would only have to have a 5% loss in price then to start to trigger a payment, which would be 380 December corn. Uh, we've spent a lot of time below 380 corn in the last five, six years, including this contract, which traded down into the 350s here this summer before this recent rally. Uh, a 90% trigger, would take you down to 360, which is just about where the lows have been. So again, this is part of the reason I'm I'm excited about using this this policy really as a subsidized put option based on county yields. And so if we assume an average yield, then it doesn't take a lot of price drop historically to trigger something, a payment on corn. And if we look at the history over the last 15 years, uh, this is kind of interesting that nine out of the last 15 years, the corn price from February to October has gone down far enough to trigger by itself to have at least a 5% loss. So we've had three of those years where we would have gone down where SCO would have potentially triggered just based on price drop. But you can see even the six-year run from 13 to 18, we had corn prices drop uh, at least uh, 5%, if not much more than that. So we can't predict yields at this point in time, but the higher we start with these prices in February, the better that these uh, higher level products are going to be and the more interested I'm certainly going to be in being able to utilize this as a price put option uh, for next year. Uh, for soybeans, uh, here's a snapshot of the bean chart. November beans right now closed at about 979 last night. So I drew my lines in here and, and if we had a 5% drop in price from that level, takes you down to around 930, which again, we've spent a lot of time below 930 in November bean futures uh, in the 21 contract and other contracts as well. So, uh, and you can see, you know, here's a 10% loss line down around 880. And then the 14% loss line, which was where SCO would start to trigger is all the way down around 830 or about 840 or so. So it really shows you the advantage of ECO, you know, as a marketing tool versus SCO. SCO, you'd have to have a substantial drop uh, in, in price and or bushels in order to trigger a payment. ECO gets you so much closer to the market. And so that's why I'm really a big fan of this product. Now, looking at the history of bean prices, uh, we have not had that many years. Uh, only had five out of 15 years where we've had at least a 5% drop in the bean price from spring to fall. And actually, if you look at the averages over the last 15 years, we've averaged higher in the fall period. So I think what this tells me is that I'm going to wait and see what the price is in February. And if we're trading at a relatively high price, if we think that we're going to plant a lot more bean acres in the U.S. Uh, this coming spring, then that's going to make this bean ECO look a lot more attractive. Uh, if we don't think acres are going to go up, if the price has started to come down, maybe I won't be as big of a proponent of it. So, uh, so we'll continue to watch that as we go forward. Cotton, uh, for those in cotton country, cotton market continues to rally. We're up to 71 cent cotton right now uh, as of last night's close in the DS21 contract. 
So a 5% loss in price only has to take you down to 67 cents. And you can see where this contract has been over the last six months. Uh, we've been well below that level. A 10% loss takes you down to about 64 cents, 14% for SCO, which I've been a proponent of for cotton, uh, but that uh, still around 61 cents. So again, the higher you can get this, this trigger on revenue, uh, the, the better off the producer is going into the year. And cotton's kind of like corn that uh, it's had a significant number of years. I believe, uh, I think seven or eight years that we've had at least a 5% drop. Uh, it seems to go almost every other year, it looks like. But uh, uh, but again, the higher we get this price set in February, then the better off we are with this product. Spring wheat uh, doesn't seem to have as much volatility in price maybe as the other crops, uh, but we did close at the high last night on SEP 21 wheat at 595, and a 5% price loss takes you down around uh, into the low 560s. Uh, but historically, spring wheat is like corn that nine out of the last 15 years, we've had at least a 5% price drop. So again, if we were able to get close to $6 wheat here this spring, uh, then I'm going to be a lot more interested in us, utilizing this product. So a couple questions before I move on. Uh, can you go from 90 to eight, 90 to 95 or does it have to start at 86? No, you can, you, oh uh, wait, I'm sorry. Uh, I believe it has to start at 86. Uh, it has, it's 86 to 90 or 86 to 95, I think are the two choices. That was a good question. Uh, all going to come down to the premium they think uh, that they put out, I think. I, Bill, you're probably right. A lot of people are going to be really focusing on the premium and, and, uh, and, and you know, how many dollars of coverage you get uh, versus the dollar spent. Uh, from my past experience uh, as an agent and, and in working with agents over the last few years, I, I've tended to think that if you can get $4 of coverage for a dollar in premium, that's a pretty good sell. Most people are really interested in that. At three to one, it's maybe not as attractive, uh, but, but we've been able to see people still interested in buying a product. If you can say get $80 of extra protection for spending 27, that's gotten some interest. But if you can get 80 for 20 or 80 for 15 or 75 for 15, then you really start to get into people's, uh, you know, kind of the hot zone, I think. so. You're, you're right. It's going to come down to where is that premium versus the, the amount of coverage you can get. So I want to switch gears here for a second and show you a, a worksheet that we've been working on uh, that we are going to make available uh, called SEO, ECO indemnity worksheet. This is going to be available. And by the way, if you haven't seen the new agent portal picture, or this, this is a snapshot of what it's going to look like. Uh, so it's going to look a little different than our other uh, uh page. But uh, if you click on the resources tab in the agent portal, we're going to have a tab under here for sales tools. This is where we're going to have initially this SEO, ECO uh, indemnity uh, worksheet, as well as any other sales tools that we're going to develop as we go forward. So these are going to be independent of having to go through Easy Rider Pro. So you'll be able to get on here and be able to do some what ifs with this worksheet. And that's what I wanted to be able to have is something that we could sit down with a producer and, and with ECO and SCO, it's going to be the same uh, for everyone in a county. So you don't need to go in and run this for every individual producer. You can run this for the county and uh, have one for each of the counties that you work with. But this is what it's going to look like. Um, at least initially, we may make some tweaks to it as we move forward. So if you've got ideas, please share them. But uh, the yellow boxes are what you need to fill in. Everything else calculates. And so the yellow boxes on this worksheet are for base price as well as harvest price. You'll need to plug in the producer's APH. So, or if you want to use a generic number, you can. Uh, you'll need to plug in his coverage uh, at the top end, which I, in this example, I said 95%, and then his RP coverage at the bottom, which I said in this, this example, the producer bought an 80% policy. If the producer decides to leave a gap in his coverage and not buy SCO, uh, then you would put 86 in here. So in other words, if he bought an 80% policy, didn't buy SCO, then he's only going to get paid on this kind of coverage from 86 to 95. So basically this is the bottom of his county level protection. So something to keep in mind as well. Uh, then you'll put in the expected county yield down here in the, and the final county yield, 
Those are the only numbers you'd have to plug in to these equations. So let me walk you through the worksheet and you can kind of see how the different calculations take place. And by the way, you can do this for any crop. So we start out with our harvest price and our base price. Uh, our APH on the farm, in this example, the producer is a little higher than the county, but he has a 200 bushel corn APH times the higher of the two prices means he's, or times the base price, he's gonna expect to get $800 an acre in expected county revenue. Uh, his trigger, uh, he's calculated that out. He's gonna get 15% of ECO and, and SCO coverage. And then on the right-hand side, we're gonna take the uh, expected crop value times that coverage, which gives his protection amount that he has from this policy, his dollars of protection. That'll come in later when we calculate the loss. Then we have the loss calculation. Uh, the, the county's yield uh, in, in this producer's county is 190 bushels. And he, uh, we're gonna multiply that by the higher of the base price and the harvest price, which means he's gonna have an expected county revenue of $760 an acre. Uh, his final county yield is 170. The harvest price went down to 380, which means that the final county revenue is 646. We divide that, that final revenue into the expected revenue, and the county came up with 85% of its expected revenue. We're gonna subtract that then, so we only got 85%, but he had a 95% top coverage trigger, which means that there was a 10% loss versus his coverage. We're gonna divide that by his total coverage of 15%, which means that he has an indemnity factor of two thirds, 66.7%. Then we multiply that number by his dollars of protection on his for his farm, which comes up with a payment of $80 an acre. So uh, it's a lot easier to go plug the numbers in and let the calculator do the math than it is to actually do it. But I wanted to walk you through the different parts of it so that you got a chance to see it. A couple more questions. Uh, Rich, if we use the sales tool uh, in February, we won't have the final county yield or harvest price. That is very true. Uh, this is an indemnity worksheet, so it's designed to come up with the, to calculate the indemnities, but this is also where you can do some what ifs with the producer. And you can say, well, what do you think might happen this year? Well, let's say, and I, I'm gonna go through a couple of those examples here uh, in just a second. Uh, where do we get the farm APH versus unit APH? Uh, that would be, get that from Easy Rider Pro, uh, or you can just use an estimated APH uh, because again, these are estimates that we're using early in the year. As you get later on into the year, then maybe you can take the average APH from the producer. Uh, but uh, at least during sales season, you know, we can, we can come up with an average uh, on, on the person's farm or have him estimate what he thinks roughly his estimated APH for the sake of being able to walk through the math. So let's, uh, again, uh, this is the example I just showed you. These are the moving parts. Uh, this 120 is impacted because the 200, his eight farm APH is running 10 bushel higher than the expected county yield. So that, that has an impact ultimately on the final dollars of payment. And I think in this example, it ended up being five or six dollars extra payment that he got by having a slightly higher APH on his farm. So, uh, oh, I skipped through there. So let's go through a couple of other examples. Let's say the producer bought a 90% uh, trigger. So he went 90 to 86 ECO, added SCO from 86 down to 80. So he has a 10% band of coverage there on the county products. In this example, we do the math, his dollars of protection dropped to $80. His payment factor, he only had a 5% loss uh, since from 80 down to, or from 85 to 90. So that loss didn't change. He still had 85% of expected revenue in the county. He just didn't have his coverage level as high. He ended up getting paid half of that band, which was $40 an acre. In this example, if the producer had only done SCO, so prior to ECO, if he had only bought the SCO protection up to 86%, he would have added $48 of coverage to his for on this policy. And in this example, would have got paid $8 for that 6% loss. So you can see the, the value in this example of having the higher coverage, certainly if you, if you expect yield and price to go down, then, then that does make some sense. So let me look through a couple of other examples here. These are maybe more realistic, but let's say for example, what we think was gonna happen this year happens next year. Let's say that we think going into the year, we're gonna have a 
pretty good crop. Uh, we would project a good crop. And if that happens everywhere and acres are up, price goes down. And so in this example, I'm starting out at $4 corn, but I'm going to say that the harvest price goes to three forty. dollars and, and here's where we can do our what ifs with the producer. We can do a couple of, let's say this happens or let's say this happens. But in this example, I bought the 95%. Uh, ECO on top of the SCO with an 80% RP policy. And let's say in this example that the harvest yield ends up very good in the county. We went up to 200 bushels, so the county yield was higher. He still ended up with a loss in county revenue of $80, or we ended up with just under 90% of the expected revenue in the county, which was a 5.5% loss. Take that divided into the 15%. Uh, bottom line, he ends up multiplying that uh, 36.8 times 120, ends up getting paid $44 an acre. This is what we thought was going to happen in a lot of the, uh, the Midwest this year on corn. We really expected we were going to have prices stay low, county yields were going to be great, and, and consequently the higher coverages were going to be paying some fairly large indemnity payments. As it turned out, we had a drop in, in crop size uh, due to a couple of different factors, due to drought, due, due to wind, and we had some China demand that kind of brought this market back up. But if we go back and return to the, to the type of an area where we see good yields and low prices, this product's going to help us. Let's say we have another, the opposite situation happens. Let's say we go to another 2012 and we have a drought, price goes up, demand's good. And so in this example, I bought the 95% ECO again on top of SCO, but let's say the harvest price goes to $5 a bushel because the county yield was only 120 bushel corn. Uh, in this example, uh, we would have had 6% or excuse me, $600 of revenue in the county divided by 950. Uh, that would have been a lot lower than 80%, but this coverage stops at 80%. That's because that's where his RP coverage starts to kick in. And so we know in this example that I'm sure that the loss was much more significant. He would have ha also had an RP claim and he would have gotten paid on the RP loss in the fall or whenever the, that was adjusted, the rest of this payment then would be made in the spring. So at least the producer knows that if you have the underlying RP coverage at a higher level, you're going to get paid something at the time of the loss. But in this example, he's going to get paid his entire expected uh, protection, uh, dollars of protection, which in this case got bumped up to $150 because of the higher harvest price. And so by having the harvest uh, revenue uh, revenue policy or the ECO with the harvest price, his dollars of protection went up to the maximum amount uh, in this example, which would be $150. He has a 100% loss. He lost that entire 15% band. He's going to get paid that entire $150 an acre. So I showed you two examples, one with a low yield, high price, one with a high yield and low price. Um, you know, those both paid in those examples but it wouldn't take a whole lot of difference in the middle uh, ground uh, as well to start to trigger payments. And so these are the kinds of things that we can show the producer with this, with this uh, worksheet to be able to kind of hopefully help them, you know, put them at ease. And they say, well, what happens if, what if we had a 2012, what if we had a, a 2019 or 18 and the prices went down, uh, we can kind of look at those examples. Uh, one question, uh, will ECO follow the underlying coverage? Yes, it does, uh, like SCO. Most rice insurance currently by YP, so the ECO then would stay with YP if that's what their RP, or excuse me, if that's what their underlying uh, protection was. And you're correct. Maybe then in those cases, uh, producers would buy a, an RP policy so they could get the RP or the revenue on the ECO. That's a very good uh, comment, very good uh, uh, observation. Uh, one other point I want to make out before I, uh, before I get off uh, is that uh, we do have this as a blank sheet as well. Uh, we're going to have that available. I've had a couple of questions early on when we talked about developing this uh, of agents that said we would like to have a blank one so that you could actually sit down with a pencil and walk through the math with the producer. And so we've got that we're going to have this available. You can print these out and be able to plug in the numbers that you want to plug in and, uh, and go through the math with pencil and paper as well. Uh, I, one last thing, I, I do want to mention all of the different marketing things that we 
make available at NAU Country. Uh, if you're not familiar with some of the services that we've got, the opening bell phone call in the morning, uh, the market report is the email letter in the afternoon, the aftermath is the, day, uh, is the monthly webinar. Uh, primarily the market report in the aftermath will be the two sources of where I'm able to put information out regarding ECO. And so I know that I'll be discussing it, especially after the rates come out uh, on the aftermath webinars. As we get into DS Jan, Feb, we'll be talking about this at great length uh, because I'm excited about the opportunities with this that this policy offers us. Uh, the market report as well. And in fact, I put a plug in for it last night in the market report, as I talked about starting to forward sell some 2021 crops. And so check out the market report daily, check out the aftermath each month, and we'll discuss these, uh, this ECO program as we go forward. Uh, here was a snapshot of last night's page two. Again, I had a bunch of different marketing strategies in here, but down at the bottom, I did give a little plug for ECO. Uh, for, so at least producers will start to get this in their mind. You may get some questions uh, because of that. And so uh, that's something we want to continue to promote and uh, continue to show that it's available. So any uh, last questions? I do have one here. Uh, is the YP based on the spring price? only for ECO also. Yes, it is. Yeah, that'll be using the same price that gets set during February. So for all of these products, that's a good question. So if you do have other questions after this, we are going to make this available on our website. Uh, so if you want to go back and listen and, and watch through it again, you're welcome to. You're welcome to shoot me an email at rich.morrison at naucountry.com. Uh, my phone number is here below, 763-242-2557. You're welcome to give me a call, shoot me a text, whatever, if you've got questions about this product, uh, this product as we go forward or other things as well. Uh, another question, can the underlying coverage be 75%, for example? Uh, yes, it can. We mentioned that earlier that you can leave a gap in coverage. You, a producer could only buy his RP up to 75% and then buy, uh, uh, then buy the ECO from 86 to 95 Yes, you would have a gap in coverage, but you would maybe take part of that money that you were going to spend uh, on the uh, on the uh, on your RP policy and switch it to a higher coverage uh, in that ECO. Uh, Heather had asked a question: Are you concerned with producers being able to cash flow with payments not coming until later? Uh, do you think it will hurt the sale of this product? Uh, yes, it is a concern. I think uh, I'm sure it's a concern of some lenders as well. Uh, so we're going to have, as it was maybe with margin protection and RPI and, and grip in the days that we had that as well. So, uh, so I think there is some concern. Um, I, I think that that's something that we'll try to address here as we move forward as well uh, with, well, I don't want to get into any more than that, but, uh, but yes, I do think it is a bit of a concern. But if we know it's coming, it's not much different than the PLC and the ARC payments. Actually, those don't come until October or November of the following year. So, you know, this gets a little closer than those do. Uh, one thing that would help that is if we could pu uh, push the RMA to maybe try to move the, uh, the county yield uh, numbers uh, releases up a little bit. Maybe that would require us to move production reporting up a little bit. I don't know. But anything that would help get those county numbers out quicker would certainly be a benefit. Uh, last question, do you have it? Have to have an underlying MPCI policy? Yes, that's the way I read it. You do have to have a, an MPCI policy. Doesn't have to be 80 or 85%, but you would have to have some underlying policy. SC also uh, sold very well because lenders like the higher risk coverage. That is the offset of that. Yes, you're right. The, the being able to get 90, 95%, being able to get more dollars of protection at a subsidized, uh, with a subsidized product is really where this thing's got its legs at. So I, I agree that that's probably would overweigh the uh, concern about the later payments uh, in most cases. Well, great, everyone. I appreciate your participation. I appreciate the questions. And uh, we'll look forward to working with everybody down the road. And uh, uh, oh, a question, it's a county-based plan though, correct? Yes, it is a county-based plan, correct, area-based. So I appreciate working with everybody. And uh, Zach, thank you. I'm glad to be on the team as well. So uh, we uh, will continue to work with you going forward as we get any new details. We know that there are some other details on the policy coming out. 
I don't know exactly what those would be about, but I was told that we don't have everything yet. So a month or so down the road, we anticipate getting rates. And then from then we can, uh, we can kind of jump in with both feet, but I am excited about being able to bring this uh, higher level coverage to producers. So with that, I'm going to go ahead and adjourn. And again, if you got questions, please uh, shoot them at me. So thank you and have a good day.